Hi everyone, it's good to be back. It's been a little while since I shared a recipe video. Today I'm sharing my simple method for making 100% whole grain rye sourdough bread with seeds added. I've been making this bread for years and it's a favorite in our house. This is a really straightforward method in my usual style, but it's also very flexible and I'll show you how I use the fridge to help me manage my baking on busy weekdays. So to start off making this bread, I just weigh out my grain for milling. I'm using 500 grams of whole organic rye grain. If you don't have grain, you're not milling your own flour, just buy the best quality whole rye flour you can get your hands on. Um, my mock mill 200 here, it does mill the flour pretty finely and I just tend to leave it on the finest setting. Um, It'd be interesting to try this with more coarsely milled flour actually. Um, but yeah, just try and get the finest whole rye flour that you can get. This milling takes a couple of minutes. I've sped it up quite a lot there. I don't let my flour cool down or anything after I mix it. I just mill it straight away and then mix the dough. So it is a little bit warm. In winter, that's great. That aids the fermentation process. In summer, I tend to use cold water just to cool things down a little bit more. Then I add my salt. So I'm using 10 grams or about a teaspoon and a half of salt, which is around about 1.8 to 2% salt for the whole recipe. Now I'm going to add my seeds. All the seeds in this dough, in this loaf, just make it so delicious. So I use about one cup in total, about 160 grams. And in this one, I've got sesame, pumpkin, sunflower, poppy, and chia seeds. Just be aware that some seeds soak up a lot of water. So chia seeds are a great example. They absorb tons and tons of water. I'm just writing my recipe down there as I go along. Um, yeah, so in this recipe, this chia seeds soak up a lot of the, the water, so you can increase the water in the recipe if you want to. Definitely do that if you're adding lots of seeds like I do. Uh, I mix the salt and the seeds through really, really thoroughly. I probably go further than I need to, but I want to make sure that that salt is really well distributed in the flour before I add any wet ingredients. I make a little well in the center and then I add my water. So I did add only 450 grams of water to this dough and it made a really stiff dough with all those chia seeds and I was kind of a bit absent-minded and didn't think about it enough. In retrospect, I'd probably add more and most of the time, I'm just adding some molasses there as well. Most of the time I don't measure my water at all. I just add enough till I get a, a sort of sloppy-ish dough it doesn't really matter too much um, so I just dissolve the molasses in the water there first before I mix any of the flour through and then I do the same with my starter I'm using 130 grams of sourdough starter this is just my wheat starter if you so it's not technically 100% rye bread um, but you could make a rice starter if you want to or some of you probably just use rice starters anyway I just use my wheat starter uh, there's not a whole lot of wheat flour in there so to me it's still a rye bread <laughs> anyway we won't argue about that um, so I just same as with the molasses I really take some time just to mix the starter through in the water first in the well before I pull in all the dry ingredients and the flour from the outside and that just makes sure the starter is there's no lumps it's fully dissolved in the water and you get a really nice even mix and then just mix it through this dough whisk that I'm using is very special to me my dad made it for me he's so clever he's a really clever guy and got a lot of skills and craftsmanship and I told him about these Danish dough whisks and he made one for me and one for my mum as well it's a beautiful thing I just love using it for um, all sorts of things I use it to make some cake whisking up cake batters as well uh, once the dough is all together you see it looks fairly wet-ish there rye flour is completely different to wheat based flours it's like clay it's very sticky it's very low in gluten so it behaves completely differently i just flatten it all out and then pop a lid on it 
Now I mix this dough at about 1.30 in the afternoon. I wasn't organized to get it done in the morning and I did have to go out in the evening. So I pretty much let it ferment all afternoon and most of the evening. I had to go out that night. So when I got back at 9.30 p.m., you see my starters risen up there again. The dough has risen, it's well fermented. I just put it in the fridge, um, having a good look there. But um, this is a really good technique. I've been doing this with some of my wheat and spelt based loaves as well. Ferment them during the day and then pop them in the fridge overnight and then proceed to the shaping and baking the next day. So here we are, 9 a.m. the next morning. Obviously the dough is really cold. It's been in the fridge, so it's going to take a long time to rise up. Um, but if you've got time, you know, you can really play around with putting things in the fridge to put them in hibernation before you move on to the next step. It's a great trick if you're really busy or things happen unpredictably and you need to go out when you didn't plan to. You can see this dough is really, really stiff. Those chia seeds, they soak up so much water. Um, usually my rye doughs aren't quite this stiff, but this is stiff because it's cold as well. So you don't need to knead this. Sometimes I just slop these doughs into the tin, depending on how wet they are. Um, but this one's a really firm one. I'm just kneading it just to homogenize it a little bit. Um, when it's in the fridge overnight, the top layer gets a little bit of a different color to it through oxidization. So I like to just kind of mix it through and then <laughs> muscle it into a shape that's going to fit the tin. I've greased my tin with my pan release mixture. Uh, yeah, this, this would have made a really great freeform bake. <laughs> a night, you want a nice firm rye dough if you want to bake them freeform. But I tend to bake most of my loaves in a tin these days. So I just pop it in the tin, which I have greased with that pan release mixture that I use and tap it down just to make sure it's nice and evenly filling the tin. And I like to get my little spatula and just round in the edges. That way you get a nice shape on the top of the dough. And I like to put some seeds on the top too. You'll notice here that I push these seeds in quite a lot. Like I really squeeze them in and I find that that's the best way to make sure that they don't all fall off. You know, when you're cutting the loaf, um, it does work. You'll see later on when I cut the, the, the bread that the seeds stay on the crust pretty well. Now you want to proof the dough until it's risen about 50%. Uh, because this was cold to start off with, it took about four hours. And when it's ready to go, you'll see it's kind of risen up in the tin and it's you want it to be obviously risen. Now, I'm using a small tin on purpose here. This is just a one liter size tin because um, I want this dough to really fill it up and get a nice high rise. So I've let it really proof right over the top of the tin. Um, preheat your oven and your roaster if you're using one to 210 Celsius or 410 Fahrenheit. Uh, and then when you're ready to bake, pop it in there. I give a little spray of water just for some added steam. You don't need to. Um, and bake it for about 50 to 60 minutes covered. But if you're baking it uncovered, you'll bake it for less time. And there's the bread. Steamy and gorgeous. I don't uncover this at all. I tend to bake my breads covered the whole time. That way the crusts don't get too dry, which can happen with rye breads. The crust can get quite hard. You'll see this is a gorgeous, beautiful golden color. I love it. You just bake these until they're nice and brown and the seeds are starting to go brown and that's usually right for me. And then I do the tap test on the bottom. I don't bother with thermometers or anything to check the inside temp. It's always done when I bake them to this point. And it smells and tastes delicious. I was having a busy week this week, so this is 24 hours later, I'm cutting the loaf. You can see the crumb is uh, fairly dense, but for the style of bread that it is, it's really good and it's very tasty. And um, this is a little bit more robust than some of my usual ones where I add a lot more water, uh, but it's a fantastic bread and it actually makes really good sandwiches. And the further you cut into this loaf, the more open the crumb gets. It's a little bit more dense at the ends. Um, yeah, it's just gorgeous. All those seeds in there. I just adore this bread. It's a real regular for us. A little bit of 
spread photography going on here. <laughs> and that's it. Thanks so much for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed that. Please let me know if you've got any questions or comments in the comments section below. You can also get in touch with me through my website. And if you'd like to make a donation to support my work, you can head to my buy me a coffee page, uh, buymeacoffee.com slash Ellie's every day. And thanks to all my lovely supporters there. Thank you. I really do appreciate your contributions. And if you're interested in getting into home milling and making your own fresh flowers at home, I highly recommend the Mock Mill range. I have a Mock Mill 200, which is one of the more humble models, but I've had it since 2018 now and we use it multiple times every week and it is just incredible to make your own whole grain sourdough bread with freshly milled flours. If you'd like some information on where you can purchase mock mills, I've got some links in the description box and also on my website. Some of those links do provide discounts for people who purchase uh, mock mills, particularly at Van Roy in Australia, in Melbourne, and um, through Breadtopia and Mock Mill USA. There's a discount if you use my Ellie's Everyday promotion code. So make sure you check that out if you're interested. Thanks everyone. I really look forward to seeing you all again soon. Take good care of yourselves. Bye.